Hello everyone, this is Meow's Cafe. I am glad to be here to share my story. My name is Hazel. I have a best friend, she knows all my gritty past and watched me crawl out of the mud. She would wear beautiful dresses, stand on the sideline and cheer for me, encouraging me to continue. Though she always looks arrogant in front of others, she is in fact, the kindest person I've ever met in my life. When I was 13, I lived on campus and met a girl who was particularly delicate and precious. In terms of food, she would only eat the tomatoes in the tomato scrambled eggs, the chicken leg instead of chicken breast, and the beef balls instead of fish balls. When we went shopping and ate ramen together, she would move the meat from her bowl to mine since she believed that the pork out there was coated with starch, therefore she refused to eat it. From junior 1 to senior 3, we were classmates and dorm mates for 6 years. I thought only I could tolerate her princess temperament, picky mouth, delicate and unable to bear hardships. It wasn't until I grew up and became sensible that I realized she wasn't being spoiled, she was just emotionally intelligent. She was carefully protecting my self-esteem. Our friendship was quite peculiar. From junior 2 until senior 3, I have almost always ranked first in literature each year, except for the second semester of junior 2. As I recalled, I scored 114.5, while she scored 115. When the teacher read out the scores in class, he reminded us to recheck. I counted and found that the teacher had miscounted, I should have had 115.5. I recounted many times, and asked my deskmate to help me confirm. After ensuring there was no mistake, I took my test paper to the literature teacher's office after class on the last day of the semester. The teacher made a note and said he would help me change it in the system. At the award ceremony at the beginning of the school year, the first place announced for the whole school for literature was her name. The teacher didn't change my score, and she was somewhat astounded as she went on stage to receive the certificate. After the awards, she came over to me, slammed the certificate and a rewarded notebook on the table, and said this is mine, she doesn't want it. We were both called to the office for mediation. The teacher explained that the scores were already published and could not be changed in the system after a specific period. Also, he mentioned that if each class started to change the scores, it would be in chaos. I knew that I was the top, and it was okay as long as everyone knew it, there will be another chance in the future. I hid in my bed and sobbed quietly during evening self-study, fearing other roommates would hear me. This incident became a boulder weighing on my heart. Even now, I can't forget it. You can't imagine that in your proudest subject, at the most sensitive and inferior age, you have worked hard to reach your goal, hoping for some affirmation but paying for someone else's mistake. This is how we became enemies, competing stealthily. I swore that next time I would regain the first place with an overwhelming advantage, not just 1 or 0.5 points ahead. In the eyes of classmates and teachers, she and I were from two different worlds. It's hard to imagine that we later became best friends. Her family was wealthy. A singleton, her parents ran several drugstores, and her uncle was a big businessman. Every week after school, a car would pick her up at the school gate. She was the first one in the class who went to see the Idols concert. At that time, the ticket price was over a $200 each. My family was poor, there were many siblings, and I needed to apply for a poverty scholarship for school, a few hundred per term. The school would never have parents come to pick me up, because my parents were always busy working and making money. On weekends, I would cook dinner for the whole family. After eating, I would leave the food and keep it warm for my parents and then walk to school with my backpack. I could take a motorcycle to school, the fare was $1, but I rarely took a motorcycle as it costs money. If I run a little faster, it takes me 25 minutes to reach school by foot. At school, I basically wear school uniforms. I only had two sets of clothes to change. Even though my short-sleeved black clothes were worn out, I still wore them. I really wished at that time that the school could mandate students to wear school uniforms at all times, so I wouldn't be found out that I didn't have many clothes to change into. In the first year of junior high, we were in the same class, but without much intersection. In the second year of junior high, after that farce, the teacher arranged for us to sit together, in the name of two good students in literature can improve together, progress together. Female friendship is peculiar. One moment we may not like each other. But when we became deskmates, we found a lot of private small topics to talk about. Through talking and sharing, feelings get better. We agreed to go to the canteen together during breaks, walked back to the dorm together after evening self-study, and even went to the bathroom together, hand in hand. After getting along, I found out she was quite nice, bold, straightforward, and just a bit delicate. At the cafeteria, she would always order a ton of dishes, chicken, duck, hot dogs, and so on. Most students would get one meat and two vegetables or two meat and one vegetable, but my family was poor, so I'd only have one vegetable dish. But she'd pile her plate high with food every time. 
After a few bites, she'd start complaining that she was full and wanted to throw the rest away. I hated seeing her waste food and would always stare at her until she finished her meal. In the end, she'd always push her leftovers into my bowl and ask me to help her finish them. As a spoiled girl, she had quite the particular taste. She ate the tomatoes in tomato scrambled eggs but pushed the egg onto my plate. I suggested that she order a dish of stir-fried tomatoes instead, but she insisted that she didn't like plain fried tomatoes and must eat them with eggs. In a serving of meatballs, there would be a mixture of pork, beef, and fish thrown together, she only liked the beef ones, and would pick out the rest for me to eat. With the stir-fried chicken, she'd go through the dish to find the wings and legs, since those were her favorite parts. The chicken ribs, which were full of bones, and the stringy chicken breast meat, she'd pick them out and give them to me. There wasn't a single meal where she wouldn't pick out things for me to eat. Despite me constantly lecturing her about not wasting food and not ordering so much if she wasn't going to finish, she'd keep doing it anyway. As we became closer, she would buy matching outfits for us, two identical t-shirts, claiming that many good friends wore the same clothes to stand out. In high school, she bought about seven or eight different sets of these matching outfits. She put an mp3 player in my hands, telling me to listen to English recordings to improve my language skills. On weekends, she'd drag me to her house to tutor her in literature. If I refused, she'd throw a tantrum, accusing me of making new friends and forsaking her. Afterwards, for every exam, I was always the best in the subject, while she would always be saying how she was going to beat me next time, but she never did. Her mother was very kind, arranging a lot of delicious food for us, and thanked me for tutoring her daughter and for correcting many of her bad habits. At that time, I was poor, very reserved, and basically an introvert, and she was a wealthy and beautiful girl liked by the boys, but excluded by the girls who would gossip about her. She had a fiery temper and would confront people head-on, which often resulted in being called to the teacher's office. We were both quite isolated, but we never rejected each other and ended up hanging out together until high school graduation. We then attended the same university and even returned to our hometowns to work together. She inherited her family's pharmacy while I was diligently working a white-collar job. We became each other's witnesses through the most critical stages of our lives. We would have regular dinners together, she doesn't pick through her food anymore, and she can now eat her tomato scrambled eggs, chicken, beef, and fish meatballs, and when we go out together for ramen, she doesn't give me her meat anymore. Actually, I knew her secret all along, only she was fool enough to think that I didn't know. During high school, when I went to her home to tutor, while making lunch in the kitchen, her mom would tell me all about her. She said her daughter had been spoiled from a young age, was very straightforward, and hardly brought friends home. She asked us to help each other. Her mom was making soy chicken and kept applying marinade on it. I replied smilingly, yeah, she is quite picky, only eating chicken wings and discarding the breast meat, only eating tomatoes and scrambled eggs, should change that. Her mom seemed surprised and said it wasn't true, she finished her plate of scrambled eggs last night. After that, I deliberately observed her eating habits, which were very changeable. What she didn't like the last time, she would start eating the next. During the summers of college, when we went out to eat, she didn't have any of those strange habits anymore, she was perfectly normal. I knew that she was doing all those on purpose. She always ordered so much food, gave me extra meat, got so much breakfast and gave me extras, even bought the same clothes so she could give me new clothes to wear. Her mother was very gentle. The first time I went to her house wearing old yellowed sneakers, I felt embarrassed to take off my shoes because my sock had a hole. I stood awkwardly at the door, not daring to step on the floor. Her mother came over and took my hand, telling me I didn't have to change my shoes. She also ushered us girls to go into the room and said that we can share some secret conversations and she wouldn't interrupt. I guess this gentle mother taught her daughter to be a kind-hearted kid through word of mouth and personal examples. The curiosity in my heart, during the second year after graduation, I asked her about it. She broke into a hearty laugh, calling me stupid to just realize it now. I laughed too, without probing further. Sometimes, asking too much ruins the charm. She is the most emotionally intelligent person I have ever seen. Her emotional intelligence isn't about being clever or personal gain, it's purely about kindness and a good heart, wanting to befriend me, hoping that I could have my fill, and that's all. Being able to have a friend accompanying you from your childhood, and can continue to accompany you further in the future, to listen to your complaints and share your joy, is a massive blessing in life. Well, my story ends here. So, what kind of good people have you met? Or do any of y'all have interesting friendship stories? Welcome to Meow's Cafe to share your stories. Good night. Good coffee, by the way. Thank you. Maybe I'll invite her to come next time.